In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the knobs and button macros in a combinator. We have a Thor tied to a delay, and we're going to turn that into a combinator. And I would like to assign a button to switch the delay on and off. To do that, we show the programmer. There's a lot in here. We're going to be focusing mainly on the modulation routing section on the right. First, I select the item I want to assign the macro to, and that'll be the delay. And then I find the item, the button one, and I'm going to choose enabled, which is the switch that has on, off, and bypass. It can go from zero to two. Zero is off, one is on, two is bypass. Now, if I set this up so that minimum is one and maximum is two, what happens when I click the button? Well, if it's on, I'm in bypass mode. And if it's off, I'm on on mode. So it's really a delay cutoff button. I want to switch that around and turn this into a delay enable button. So I'm going to go from two to one. So when the button is enabled, we will be on. And when the button is disabled, we will be in bypass. Just double clicking on a label, I can change it. That works great. Let's do something else. Let's assign the feedback knob to my first rotary. So once again, delay is selected. I choose next to rotary one, feedback. We can define a range for the knob, and we'll do that from the 20s to the 100s. And now as I turn that knob, which we will label feedback, you will see the feedback knob in the delay move also. Pretty easy, huh? Now let's assign something to our Thor. The Thor has a chorus effect, and there's a dry wet parameter with the chorus and I'd like to assign rotary two to that dry wet parameter. So this time we will select the Thor from our list. We'll choose rotary two and we'll find under the effect menu, chorus dry wet. Depending on which device you select, those drop downs will change. And you can see I have a range from zero to 127. No chorusing, a lot of chorusing. Let's assign rotary three to both the frequency and the resolution of the low pass ladder filter. But in this case, I want them to move opposite. When the frequency goes up, I want the resolution to go down and vice versa. So first we will take rotary three, the Thor is still selected, and we'll choose filter one frequency. And that will go from, let's say 42 to 100. Now I already used up rotary three, but I can create another rotary three. And this time I'm going to assign it to filter resolution. But we're going to go backwards here. We're going to start with a high number and go to a low number. And now when I move that knob, if you look down at the bottom here, you'll see the knobs in the filter move in opposite directions. Now what's great about these macros is that once we've set them up, we can collapse everything down and all we need to worry about are those four knobs and four buttons. And as long as we've assigned them and given them good labels, we can use them to control just about any parameter within the combinator. One final note, you can control the rotary knobs by using CV input. So for example, I'm going to assign a matrix to control that rotary three. Let's get rid of the gate and note cables, and instead we'll use curve, assign it to rotary three, and turn that knob up so we really influence rotary three. We'll set it to bipolar, and this allows us to draw up and draw down. And now when I put the matrix in run mode, although we won't see the macro knob move, we will see the Thor move. 
Let's make sure that we have the combinator enabled in our sequencer. And if we open up our Thor, there is the frequency and resolution moving. And it's all being done from the matrix. And that's how we set up macros in a combinator.